Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss set one from the DILR section of slot one of CAT 2023 actual paper. Before I start, let me give you the information about our upcoming CAT 2024 live batch. It is going to start from 22nd January. The classes will run from Monday to Friday, and it is a morning batch. The class timing will be morning 7 o'clock to 8:30 a.m. Few course details. There are going to be 200 plus live interactive classes. What do we mean by interactive? You can unmute any time. You can unmute any point of time to raise your queries, and you will get the recordings of each and every live class that can be viewed any number of times. Along with this, 1300 plus self-study videos, 8000 plus questions with their video solutions, 50 plus full-length mock tests, and the doubt solving by using one-on-one -on -one Zoom call and by Telegram group. So let's start with the set one. Before you continue with this solution video, what I will suggest everyone to take the screenshot of the given data and questions and try the set by yourself, and then come back to this explanation video. So uh, let's start solving this set, everyone. Faculty members in a management school belongs to four departments: F and A, M and S, Q and O, O and Q, and lastly B and H. The number of faculty members are nine, seven, five, and three, respectively. So what I will do over here is I will quickly write the data in the shorter manner. The number of employees. Hold on. The number of faculties in the department F and A. The number of faculties are nine. After that, in the department M and S, the number of faculties are seven. In the department O and Q, the number of faculties are five, and in the department B and H, the number of faculties are three. So now there is no any need of first paragraph, so I will delete this. Now the second paragraph. Professor P, Q, R, and S. These are four members of the school's faculty who were candidate for the post of dean of the school. Only one candidate is from O and Q. Every faculty member, including the four candidates, voted for the post. In each department, all the members who were not candidates voted for the same candidate. The rules for the election are listed below. So hold on. So over here, total there are four candidates are there. Total, there are four candidates. Are there? The name of candidates are Professor P, Professor Q, Professor R, and Professor S. And the number of candidates. Total, there are four candidates. Are there? And from O and Q department, there is only one candidate. Now, every faculty member, including the candidates, are going to. Vote for the post. All the faculty members who, in each department, all the faculty members except the one who is candidate, they are going to vote for the same candidate. What is the meaning of this statement? Let's try to understand. For example, in F and A, there are total nine faculty members are there. Let's say out of nine faculty members, two faculties are the candidates. The remaining seven. Out of nine faculty members, if I assume two faculties are the candidates, the remaining seven faculties are going to vote for the same candidate, and that same candidate can be any one among these four. Okay, as per the data we read till now. So let me repeat the same part again. In a faculty department, total nine faculties are there. If I assume out of these nine, two are the candidates. Out of these four, the remaining seven candidates are going to vote for the same candidate among one among P, Q, R, and S. So this is the rule. I hope everyone understood this rule. So now there is no any need of this paragraph. We done with all the data of this paragraph. After this, there are few rules of the election. There cannot be more than two candidates from a single department. From each department, the number of candidates are going to be zero, one, or two. Hold on. So let me write over here the number of candidates 
from each department they are going to be two or less than two they can be two or one or zero a candidate cannot vote for himself or herself faculty members cannot vote for a candidate from their own department so over here so out of these nine faculty members from fna if i assume two are the candidates the remaining seven faculties cannot vote for these two candidates they are going to vote for the candidate from other department so now we done with these three rules now after that the last paragraph everyone after the election it was observed that professor p received three votes over here number of votes received professor p received three votes professor q received 14 votes after that professor r received six votes and professor s received only one vote professor p voted for the professor r now over here it is given that a candidate cannot vote for himself so now here it is given that professor p vote professor p vote to professor r after that professor q is going to vote for professor s professor r is going to vote for professor q and the professor s is going to vote for professor p so now there is no any need of this last paragraph so let's delete this after this before we move ahead with the calculation let's have a look at the questions the first question is which two candidates belongs to the same department second question is which of the following can be the number of votes that professor q received from a single department so after reading few questions what you will come to know we need to identify there are four candidates p q r s they are from which department now now p received 3 votes those 3 votes came from which department q received 14 votes those 14 votes came from which department and so on all this data we need to calculate now so let's have a look at it so we know that p vote to r p vote to r q vote to s and so on so we know the data of 11 vote so now the remaining votes the number of remaining votes are going to be how much p got 3 votes out of that one vote came from one vote came from s so the remaining two votes came from where that we need to identify q got 14 votes out of this 14 votes q received one vote from r and the remaining 13 votes came from where we need to identify that similarly r 5 and s 0 So over here, let me recall few things over here. A candidate cannot vote for himself or her or her herself. So these are the votes voted by candidates. A faculty member cannot vote for a candidate from their own department. So basically, these thirteen votes that Q received from the other people who are not candidate, these thirteen votes came from the department from which Q does not belong. So now let's have a look at it. And the first statement says that the number of candidate number of candidates from a single department it can be two or one or zero. There cannot be more than two people from a single department. So let's have a look at it. So over here the number of candidates are going to be either zero, one, or two. Or hold on, what we can do over here is one second. Let's bring this table over here. so number of candidates and the number of non candidates we know that from the department o and q there is only one candidate so the remaining four are non candidate now from the department f and a how many faculties can be non candidate all nine faculties or eight faculties or seven faculties the number of candidate faculties can be zero or one or two similarly the number of candidate faculties from the department ms they can be 0 or 1 or 2 so the number of non candidates becomes 7 or 
six or five. Same thing for the department BH. The number of candidates can be zero or one or two, and the number of non-candidates will become all three or two or one. So now these are the votes. These are the votes from non-candidates. The, the remaining votes means the votes from non-candidate. And there was a statement such that all the faculties of a particular department are going to vote for a same candidate. So if two faculties are there in a department, those two faculties cannot vote to two different candidates, except the candidate itself, himself or herself. So all the faculties of a same department, they are going to vote for a single candidate. So now let's have a look at it. And that candidate is supposed to be the candidate from the other department. A faculty member cannot vote to a candidate from their own department. So let's have a look at it. This two, this two comes only for here. This two comes from here. So means all the two votes received by P candidate P are from the department B H. So over here, what I can do is I can cancel out three and one. So from this, what we can conclude is the number of candidates from the department B H is one. Similarly, this five, this five comes from this. So it means R received total six votes out of those six votes. One vote, one vote came from P, and the other five votes came from the faculty members of the department M S. So from this, what we can conclude that the non-candidate faculty members from the department M S is five. It means the number of candidates from the department M S is two. And from this, what we can conclude over here, the number of candidates. Let me write over here. The number of candidates. How many candidates are there from F A? We don't know till now. From the department M S, there are going to be two candidates. From the department O Q, there is only one candidate. From the department B H, again there is only one candidate. So from this we can conclude that there are supposed to be zero candidates from the department F A. So there are going to be zero candidates from the department F A. Means number of non-candidate faculties becomes nine. And how this thirteen can be formed, everyone? This thirteen is nothing but nine plus four. Nine plus four is equal to thirteen. So Q received total 14 votes. Out of these 14 votes, one vote came from R, and the remaining 13 votes came from the nine faculties of Department F A and the four faculties of the Department O Q. So this is what we can conclude till now. After this, what we are going to identify is which candidate is from which department. From the department M S, there are two candidates. From the department O Q, there is one candidate, and from the department B H, there is again one candidate. From the department F A, there is no any candidate. So over here, you can see that R received votes from the department M S. It means R does not belong to department M S. So the remaining P, Q, and R, two people among P, Q, and S. Now let's talk about O, Q. O, Q candidate Q received votes from the department O, Q. It means candidate Q does not belong to department O, Q. So who belongs to the who belongs to the department O, Q? One among P, R, and S. Similarly, who belongs to the department P, H except P? One among Q, R, and S. So these are the possibilities. So over here you can see that P is going to vote for R. It means P and R cannot be from the same department. Similarly, Q is going to vote for S. Means Q and S cannot be from the same department. So from this, what we can conclude is there are going to be two candidates from the department M S, and among Q and S there has to be only one. The rest is P. Out of these two candidates, one of the candidate is P, and the other candidate is going to be one among Q and S. 
so now after this what we can do over here is we can remove p from this so over here the one among r and s is going to be there so over here you can see that s is going to vote for p it means s and p cannot be together in a same department so s and p cannot be going to be in the same department so we can cancel s from here so which two candidates are from department ms that is p and q and the p and q so we can cancel q from this and from r and s is going to be from b and h out of r and s one candidate is from oq department and the remaining and the remaining one candidate is from the department bh so can we find exact no we cannot find exact till now so now what we'll do is now let's jump to the questions now let's have a look at question number 1 question number 1 which two candidates can belong to the same department so over here you can see that candidate p and q they belongs to the same department so the answer of question number 1 is option a question number 2 Question number two is, which of the following can be the number of votes that Professor Q received from a single department? So Professor Q received votes from the department F A and O Q. So in F A, all nine faculty members are the non-candidate. So all nine faculty members of the department F A are going to vote for Q. and from oq from oq you can see that there are four non candidate faculty members so professor khureshi received nine votes from the department fa and four votes from the department oq so over here you can mark nine as our final answer question number 3 Question number three is if Professor S belongs to Department B H, so hold on. Professor H, sorry, Professor S belongs to Department B H. Means Professor R is going to belong to Depa Department O Q over here. Then, so which of the following statements are true? First statement: Professor P is from the Department M S. This is true. Second statement: Professor R belongs to the department OQ. This is also true. So both statements are going to be true here. Then question number four. Question number four is what best can be concluded about the candidate from OQ? So the data given in question number three is applicable only for question number three. the same data we cannot carry forward over here so what we can conclude about the candidate from oq everyone it has to be either r or s it has to be either professor r or professor s so option b is the correct over here then question number 5 question number 5 says that which of the following statements are true first statement the non candidates from mns voted for the professor khureshi the non candidates from ms professor okay voted for the professor khureshi ms no this is false non candidate from f and a voted for khureshi yes this is true so only statement b is true over here this is how we can solve this set question 6 